Welcome to the Tech One Two podcast. I'm your host, John Campus, founder and CEO of Empus. Today, we're going to discuss a very important topic and what are the steps that you can take if you have been hacked or believe you've been hacked. So let's get started. So this is something that everyone is susceptible of. Everyone is, could be a potential victim, a target of a cyber attack. Why me? Why not you? And when that happens, oftentimes people don't know what they need to do. And as part of the podcast today, we're going to discuss the things that you should really focus on in the event. God forbid that you've been hacked or you think that you've been hacked. And what are those signs to detect something like that and what you should do if you've been hacked, if there's been some sort of cyber security incident to either you personally or to your business. There's some, there's some signs of this. You know, do, do, do things seem out of the ordinary? Are you starting to receive a high volume of suspicious emails? Are people asking you if you sent them an email that you actually didn't draft from your mailbox? Are you seeing suspicious alerts that are coming in from other platforms that you use, such as your email, public email providers, banking, unrecognized uh, locations, suspicious text messages? Then it might be an indication that there's a bad actor out there that's trying to access your accounts. Let me in. Let me in. Receiving text messages that are just out of the blue, asking you to verify information, or perhaps even your multi-factor or your second factor authentication with the code to log into a site that you're actually not logging into, that's an indication that someone may, be, may have already gained access to an account and trying to get full access to it um, using that second factor of authentication. No way. I'm getting hacked. That should raise a flag and it should be, uh, you should be suspicious that something may have happened to an account. But from a business perspective, you know, there's, there's many other factors that, uh, many other indicators for identifying if you've been compromised. If there is a cybersecurity incident, there's, you know, from an internet perspective, from a device perspective, from your network side of things, there's areas that when you look at just the way that a network normally performs, has something changed? Are things not working anymore? Have you lost access to servers that you normally had access to? Are your accounts um, on your domain um, locking out more frequently than previously? And especially if it's not you trying to log in, these are telltale signs that there could be someone trying to access the account. Brother, be warned, you stand in great danger. In the event that you are, you do fall victim of a, of any type of cyber attack, whether it's within your business, and let's try to keep it specific to more on the business side today, um, there's, there's steps that you need to take. You know, there's four, there's four phases of any type of incident, and we really align with NIST standards, the National Information of Standards and Technology. We look at preparedness. Preparedness is the most, one of the most important phases of incident response. We then look at containment, isolation. We look at eradication and recovery. And then also very important is post-incident analysis. So today, we really want to, those are the four phases of incident response. But how do we identify? How do we identify that there's an active incident? There's some suspicious behavior that's happening on network. And how do we limit the damage? How do we contain it? And containing it is, uh, is something, is, it is reactive because something has already happened. That's why that first phase I mentioned, it's the preparedness. We all want to prepare so that we can avoid the incident from occurring. But the reality is these things will happen. They happen every day. They happen every hour. As a matter of fact, every eight minutes in the United States. So if you have identified that you have fallen victim or your business, number one thing that we need to do is contain it. So if that's on your computer, let's say you received 
a a ransomware note. Um, you've lost control of your computer. Someone has gained access to it. You need to contain it. So the easiest way to do that is unplug the computer. Bobby, we need to unplug everyone now. Bank. Disconnect from the wireless network. If it's a desktop, unplug the network cable. Do not turn it off. Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off! You don't want to turn it off because a lot of that evidence that may be needed will be lost when you reboot that computer. There's things that reside in memory. We want to preserve those in the event that there needs to be any type of forensic analysis, any uh, deeper analysis on your system to determine exactly what happened. So the first thing that you could do is just disconnect from the network. Disconnect from the Wi-Fi or disconnect from the network cable, network connection. Then you should inform your IT staff, whoever's supporting technology for your organization, inform them. You know, your business should have a, a what we call a no-blame zone, where if something happens on somebody's system or they click on something that they shouldn't have clicked on, they should feel comfortable and confident to report that to, let's say, the authorities, which would be anybody who's governing IT and technology for your organization, that something is going on. So when you inform them of, that, of the team, the team will take a series of steps to identify. You've already contained it on your device, but they're going to look at the rest of the network to see how they can contain it across the network so that it doesn't spread any further, and then move through the further phases of incident response. It's extremely important that you report these things, though. Tell the story, report the facts, and get it done quick. You will be surprised that the number of people who have fallen victim to some sort of cyber attack and never report it believe they can, they can just sweep it under the rug and it won't surface again until the damage is so great that it could be detrimental to the business and potentially even cause that business to close down. When we look at just your the damage that may have been done, you know, your team is going to analyze the extent of the attack. Again, don't reboot, don't shut down, just keep your system up and running. They need to analyze the extent of the attack. They're going to look at things from the network. They're going to look at telemetry, like lo which means the log data across the network. They're going to see what did the bad actor have access to. Where did they send information to? Did they make? Did they? Um, did they conduct any type of lateral movement across a network to connect from one machine to another, and then gain access to that machine, and then connect to another machine and gain access there? So it's important as part of the preparedness of incident response is that you have the appropriate tools, and platforms, and processes, and people in place. So they can identify these things when they happen. Because unfortunately, we live in a world today that it's not if, it's when something like this may happen. And we want to be prepared for it. There's going to be, uh, there, there may, depending on the extent of the attack and the industry that you're in, you may be required to provide notice to employees, to your customers, to your partners, to any third party. Oh my God. Okay, it's happening. Everybody stay calm. What's the Everybody procedure, everyone? Calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm. Wait, wait, wait. That they may need to provide notice. As you've, you know, as you've probably read over the years and with some of these large retailers, when there's an incident or a breach within their businesses, they have to provide ample notice. They have to provide um, identity protection. They have, the, the, the damage isn't just when, the bad actor gained access and launched an attack, the damage continues for many years after that. Uh, there's the law enforcement piece of it. Depending on the damage and the impact of the attack, you can absolutely report a cyber incident to 
the local government to the FBI. Does the FBI know what we know? The FBI does have, um, they do have a portal where you can log information as far as an incident so that, um, that that is logged with the FBI. And if this incident is part of a much larger incident, that may be something that the FBI may investigate with you. And, um, but there is no, depending on your industry, um, many industries have no requirement to report it to, to the authorities, but it is something that, um, you can determine as part of your incident response policy if you have uh, that as a requirement or if there's some sort of regulatory compliance that requires you to do so. Uh, we are seeing some movement as far as regulatory and compliance that requires reporting a cyber incident to the authorities within a particular a specific period of time. So it's important that you are aware of what your obligations are. So we we're in this we're in this incident response. Uh, you're in this incident response mode. Um, you've your team has identified. Perhaps they, they've contained it. They know the damage. Now we need to recover. So as part of incident response, what do we look at? We look at we look at um, er eradication. Let's make sure that the bad actor no longer has access to the network, and then we need to work on recovery. Let me know what you recover from his computer. So when we look at the recovery piece of it, preparedness again, do we have backups in place? Are the backups in a good state? Were the backups stored off-site? So depending on how your backup configuration is, you can determine what your restore options are. But if there was an incident that occurred within your business, I'm sure you want to get your business back up and running depending on what the magnitude of impact was within the organization from that incident. If it was very isolated, maybe your your tech team will just rebuild a machine, uh, make sure that they have better monitoring in place, and recover. But if it was more widespread, a much larger incident, that could have a much bigger impact to your organization. And there's careful consideration and careful, uh, they're going to be very careful with the steps that they need to take and what your IT team IT team should be doing to restore the business as quickly as possible. It's going to be quite chaotic um, in any type of incident. It's a it's a high pressure situation. It's um, it was unexpected. Um, you know you've been victimized by cyber criminals. It's not a good position to be in. There's going to be a lot of stress, a lot of things that are uh, that you're dealing with. But back to preparedness. What's the incident response plan like? Has it been tested? Have you done tabletop exercises? In other words, the tabletop exercises, let's simulate and pretend pretend that there's been a cyber attack. How are we going to respond to it? So practicing and exercising those types of scenarios will put you in a better position should knock on wood that happen to your business. Um, you, there may be data loss. Restoring and wiping your system might be a um, something that would be required, depending on the type of attack that took place. So I've spent I, I've mentioned preparedness um, quite a bit, and that is such an important step. You never want to find yourself in a position where you've been a um, a victim of a cyber attack. Why me? Why did you pick me? Nobody wants that. You know, not me, not anybody. Nobody wants to be a victim of a cyber attack. So that's why we need to look at and you should really be investing in the tools and the processes and the people and the expertise to protect the business. Because there is no discrimination against the type of businesses that um, will be... Um, that are susceptible to an attack. Really, anybody with a digital presence, meaning an internet connection, just an internet connection at your office, can be uh, targeted and uh, victimized by a cyber criminal. So this much different than it was 20 years ago. 20 years ago, 
the only businesses that were really concerned about being burglarized were the businesses that dealt with cash. So the the bank, the convenience stores, all these businesses that were dealing with cash, they weren't as concerned about a digital uh, a digital hack or burglar being burglarized digitally. It was I'm dealing. I have I have a bag of cash. Um, we're we're closing down the business for the day. I'm concerned about being burglarized. But the reality is, even the the neighborhood flower shop can be a victim of a cyber attack. They're targeted, you know. And being targeted and having this this wide net that um, cyber criminals are really targeting. It isn't about the size of business you are. It isn't about the type of industry that you're in. Again, if you have this digital presence, um, you are being targeted. So let's invest. Invest in pre- preparing. You know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We look at that. I mean, a very famous famous quote. How do we how do we prevent things like this happening? How do we mitigate that? You'll never have 100% protection against a cyber attack. There will always be that risk, but mitigate it. Mitigate it. How much risk can you tolerate? Maybe you're you can tolerate a ton of risk. Me personally, I like to manage. I like to I like to understand the risk and be able to make informed decisions on mitigating that risk. So there's the tools, there's the platforms, there's working with cybersecurity professionals organizations or people that specialize in this, making sure that you have a, multi, um, a multi-pronged approach to protecting the business. That could be EDR. That could be having good backups in place, having some sort of MDR, um, making sure that you have good password management, uh, making sure that your devices are being patched and being patched regularly. A majority of the patches that you see, even on your personal device, whether you're using an iPhone, an Android device, whatever updates that are being released, more times than not, believe it or not, more times than not, it isn't to improve the overall product and how it's functioning. It's to address some sort of security flaw that's been found in that device. So by you not updating that or having your team update your devices with confidence, then those devices can be susceptible to an attack. We modernize. Our computer software is dog shit. We update it. You want to make sure that there's good security awareness training. Um, You don't know what you don't know. So when you look at, when you're getting emails and you're unsure about them, what are you doing? Is there a process in place? How are things being analyzed? Are you getting an email that's suspicious today and forwarding it to the entire company to get validation if it's safe or not? Well, just think about that for a second. What if that email isn't safe? So an email that you received that wasn't safe, you've now just forwarded to 20, 30, 50, 100 people within your company, and that's just increasing the attack surface uh, for this bad actor. Think about it. Okay. Is there a process in place? You have these things in place where... When a bad email is received, there's something suspicious that's being reported securely so that there isn't this impact to the business. Um, and we look at just you know good digital hygiene as well. So we, we, um, we just look at the overall cybersecurity spectrum and you know the things that are happening. We know that there's this, um, this uphill battle that as a cybersecurity professional, organizations that are providing cybersecurity services, that there's just this uphill battle. There's new new um, new threats being released every day. Um, there's nation states that are attacking attacking other countries. There's script kiddies uh, that are uh, motivated uh, by some financial gain and with a very low barrier of entry into being a cyber criminal, they can do it and start launching attacks against businesses. There's just this level of um, it's 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 becoming easier to become um, a cyber criminal, and it's becoming harder to combat and mitigate these threats. 
So that's why it's important to, to again, I, I have to reiterate the importance here. Um, working with cybersecurity professionals, either invest in it internally or work with a partner, whoever that partner may be, that can help you protect the business. It is a horrible feeling. It's a horrible feeling um, being a victim of a cyber attack. I feel terrible. But there's steps. There's steps that can be taken to prepare so that that the the chances of that happening to you and to your business is much less. But with this uphill battle that we have, I was reading an article recently that there's it isn't about the investment in tools that companies lack. Um, there's actually this in a, the, there's this effectiveness problem. So it's one thing buying a product to protect your business. It's another thing is it's another thing when you look at how effective is it in protecting your business. There's so many competing products out there. There's so many platforms. This isn't about running over to the neighborhood Best Buy and buying a product off of the shelf and installing it on your systems and saying, you know what, we're good. We're secure now. It isn't about that. It's about taking this multifaceted, multi-pronged approach, multi-layered approach to protecting the business. And the only way that you can take a multi-layered approach isn't by stacking platform on platform after platform. It's about having good process and good people. So you really want to make sure that um, you are dealing with cybersecurity professionals that can give you expert advice on protecting the business. <laughs>Just as a recap, as we conclude the podcast for today, the four steps that you really need to focus on in phases are preparedness, prepare your organization and your business so that you don't fall victim to a cyber attack or at least at the very least mitigate it. You also want to look at your containment and isolation. Should you fall victim, we need to contain that and the steps that you need to take. We also look at the eradication and the recovery. How do we ensure that the bad actors no longer have access to your network and recover your systems to an operational state as quickly as possible? And then we look at our post-incident analysis. Should something happen, make sure you don't miss that step. Post-incident analysis is extremely important. So that concludes the podcast today. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.